Jim Race here for Motopod with Mr. Cat McLeod of the It Escapes. No laughing. <laughs> Not a, well, okay, you can laugh. Um, we're here to talk about something that's very, very cool, I think. And I think a lot of you people out there might like it as well. Cat runs motorcycle tours. Um, not only across the United States, but also across the world. Um, Thailand, PI, Saxon Ring, soon to maybe be a couple of other tracks. Uh -huh. That's fun, but the thing about it is they're not standard motorcycle tours. Nope. They're more like advanced tours, if you will. You go out for, say, seven, nine, five days, whatever, but in the middle of it, uh, primarily overseas, you will have a couple of track days at a iconic track, Mugello, mm -hmm. PI. Probably the best way to put a little bit of correction on that one is first we run a tour, get a cultural experience, do a lot of curvy roads, and then we top it off with dessert, and that's track time at a famous racetrack. And we're talking proper bikes here. Yeah. I mean, your track time is going to be S1000RR, mm -hmm. 899 Panigale. Mm -hmm. I mean, bikes that are built to go quick. Well, you're on a vacation. I mean, you maybe you want to take a vacation from the bike that you normally ride on the track, but also you, this is a vacation. You don't want to just ride you know, your standard track bike. You want a, a little bit of a level up. You want to, plus you really want to experience that track as best you can. And if I were to throw you on, you know, a, a little 250, well, okay, you'd hey, experience hey, the track. Don't be mocking the 250s. <laughs> you'd be experiencing <laughs> the track, but, but also the, there is nothing like getting on the gas at the Southern Loop on, on Phillip Island and just, just turn it on. That's that's a that's a special moment. And you've you've done it enough at this point. You've got more than your fair share of track miles at some of these tracks. Saxon Ring, a track that I still want to run at. Uh, PI, of course, is another one. Um, PI is a very interesting track. You ever run into any seagulls down there? Not even, not literally, but. Uh, no, but you coming around on the straightaway, yeah. uh, it'll be a, a bit of a distraction because you'll. You'll come around, you'll sight that first post, you'll get on the gas, you'll head towards the start finish line, and then you're looking across this beautiful ocean view. And occasionally you will see birds, but the problem is, for the first few times going on that track, that beautiful view can be a bit of a <laughs> distraction. <laughs> <laughs> because wow. you're, you're cranking it up 120, 130. Oh, wow, look at the, whoa, okay, you gotta go into turn one, which is thankfully not that tight of a turn. You can bleed off a fair amount of speed, but the beauty of the it course- It is downhill though. <laughs> yeah, the beauty of the course is actually a bit of a distraction. It's, it's so beautiful. And yeah, you will see the occasional seagull flying about. Um, as you well know, I am deep into Moto Grand Prix and World Superbike, yeah. and I talk to the guys all the time that do it. In fact, you've heard me talk to a yes. few of them. Um, but for your average person, I suspect, as you say, the first lap when you're coming around at PI, yeah. and you're so amazed because odds are every person that's going on one of your tours is a fan of tracks, right? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And they may have seen races and on board and all this stuff, but the first time you, you gotta be like, there's no other term. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going down the straight at PI. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it, there, you can't watch it on TV, play it on your, your, your Xbox or whatnot. There is nothing like actually being there on the course. And uh, yeah, put down the video game controller because this is real life and it's <laughs> totally different. And sure, everyone it can help you prep for the track and understand, okay, this turn's coming, this turn's coming, but actually being there, there's, there's nothing like being there. The, the big difference being uh, in a video game, it's okay to crash. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> please don't, please don't crash. It, it, it doesn't just, it doesn't just put a damper on your day. It kind of puts a damper on everyone's day when, yeah. when you lay a bike down. Um, so, what gave you the idea? I mean, there's a lot of touring companies that are out there. Mm -hmm. um, each one has their own spin. But the thing that I really appreciate about Leo Escapes is that you went for like a video game, advanced mode, <laughs> you know? Um, it wasn't so much advanced mode. I really wanted to offer people an authentic experience. And this happened when I started doing the Northern California tours. For example, I will never take you to see Alcatraz. Right. People who live in the San Francisco Bay Area hardly ever visit Alcatraz. It's a tourist thing. Well, it's pretty hard to ride over there, too. Right. Yeah. But it, it's <laughs> in, 
or, or another example, like going through Italy, I would never take you to the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Right. Uh, I want to take you to where a local rider would take you, say, this great road, this great restaurant, this hidden view that only us guys know about, less of the, the tourist trail following the tourist buses and more about great roads and great curves and the things that real riders enjoy. And in that respect, we're a little bit different than uh, Edelweiss. I have nothing but respect for what Edelweiss does. Werner has built an incredible company. And I wouldn't try to compete head to head to with them, head with them, and I wouldn't want to. We want to go after the more authentic experience, and that authentic experience really hit home for me when I was at a track day at a little German racetrack called Golstern. And I'm there, and the Germans are notoriously a little bit cold. No. Or, well, <laughs> they have a reputation for being cold, but this isn't true. Once you're inside the door, once you're inside the door, these be people become the most genuinely friendly, sincere folks. And so I was there, goals done, you know, and okay, the English is a little broken, but it doesn't matter. We're riders and we're all at this track. We're all having a good time. We're all drinking beers at the end of the day. I'm hanging out at the pit wall saying, this is as authentic as it gets. This I, is a real experience. One of the things that I think you also do, right? Uh, is it's not just riding, it's not just nice hotels, which I've seen what you've got put together, and that's uh, really some cool. Some of them are pretty nice, yeah. yeah. You are a, you're a foodie, and a, <laughs> I, I guess a drinky in a way, oh, speaking of which. Yeah, yeah it's just a, a Talisker is a, a yeah. requirement for me. It's... Cheers. <laughs> it's really about six o'clock at night, trust us. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think that's really cool because that's where morning, midday, and night, the camaraderie of a small tour, because your tours are like 15 people. 15 most. people max. Yeah. Most of the time it's more like between 8 and 10 people. Uh, and the, the food thing, a lot of times I will not do a catered dinner because a catered dinner is... Fish or chicken. Yeah, and it's, it's not authentic. Uh, yep. When we get into like the small town in the Italian Alps or something, you'll discover that a lot of Europeans, they like Turkish food. And it's actually really good. Yep. Or like Greek food in Germany is fantastic. And that's what the locals are eating. So I want people to eat like a local and I want them to have the option to go try out the kebab shop, go try real Italian pizza, which is completely unlike US pizza, or try something new. I don't want people to be limited and feel like they have to eat at the hotel with this prescribed meal. I want to get them to get out there and mix it up and really experience life like a local rider would. And so that's why food, food's important. Sometimes uh, we'll be taking a risk. Um, you'll but, be, you'll but, be, but, but you also, very wisely, I think, always have a local, yeah. what, whatever place always. you're in. So you've always. got somebody that already knows what the right. place is gonna be. But the, the, the point of the thing is with food is it's never gonna be a bland dish. You're gonna order something and you're either gonna make a new discovery or you're gonna hate it. Yeah. We don't go for the safe and pleasant thing. In some cases- you'll they, they don't have grits over there. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's like in Th well, Thailand, it's pretty tough to go wrong. At least I think so. That's our best tour for food. Uh, but a lot of cases, you'll be eating something you cannot pronounce. You may not even know what you're ordering off the menu because we'll be going to a place that doesn't have English menus. It's not as right. set up for tourists. It's a local joint. Do you have pictures? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, you, you know what? It, it just point your finger on the menu, yeah. something's gonna come. You order extra food and you, you share and you experiment and, and you get a real authentic experience instead of having the standard banquet meal. Yeah, so it's, yep. you're not eating out of right. terrines of stuff and you know there aren't those little, what are they call it? It's, it's not all about food, everyone yeah. wants to know about the roads and whatnot. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you very specifically choose not the shortest path between point A and point no. B. Absolutely. You're, 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 if, if the tires aren't broken in by the time the tour is done, something's no. gone wrong. <laughs> no. Uh, the various different tours we run, I mean, Thailand or Germany um, or Spain, which I'm trying to get more customers to realize what a great destination Spain is. It's about taking the back road that the local riders know. 
and I get local information saying, hey, 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 this has been freshly repaved. Like uh, the guys in Australia just told me about this road that it used to be dirt and kind of gravelly. Now it's been freshly repaved. And the local guys told me, you have to take this road. Okay, that road is now part of the tour because yeah. we know that road surface is going to be good for the, at least the next three years. So we're hitting it. Google Maps has turned into probably the most important tool. <laughs> I mean, can, can you imagine trying to do this without it? Um, I do use it a lot, um, but also you have to realize that Google Street View is sometimes two years old and they, they may be showing you a road surface thing. So you, uh, you always have to ask the locals and get some local feedback or uh, in many cases our local guide, uh, like in the Italian Alps, uh, we use a guy named Norbert. Norbert is kind of an unassuming guy, he's uh, a bit of an introvert, but he really knows the roads and he knows how to reroute a tour midday based upon the weather that's coming over the Alps. We're like, oh, we're gonna switch to this pass because that pass is gonna have mist and rain in a, f in a few minutes, so he can do that. I can't. I could take <laughs> you on a great tour of the Italian Alps, it's pretty hard to go wrong, but Norbert just makes it that much better. Plus the guy's wicked fast on a KTM, <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, but I want to do a tour just to have the opportunity to go at pace where people know that it's quick. If you look over our shoulder, <laughs> there's a little mountain in the background. That would be known as Mount Tamalpais. We're here in the Bay Area, uh, a day that's looking to be very gorgeous. Yeah. Uh, perchance earthquake weather, as we call it over <laughs> here. Um, let's talk about the bikes a little bit, because I think that's also part of okay. the key. Um, your lowest spec bike is like a BMW F800 GS, and but you can ramp up to higher level bikes through your program. It depends on which destination we're going to. Um, within Northern California, the standard array of BMW bikes is available. Um, for the type of roads that we do on our sport touring tours in Northern California, the BMW GS, the new water-cooled one, is the perfect bike because the suspension is good. You're going to be hitting some rough roads. It's kind of handy for that. It's got the extra power and it's nimble because we're doing a lot of extra curvy roads. When we're in Thailand, we use Kawasaki ER6N, uh, the little 650 yep. parallel twin. That's all you need. You need to maneuver in and out of traffic. The, the roads are even tighter. Um, and with a 650, you're faster than 98% of everything that's oh, yeah. out there. So yeah. that's really the only bike you need in, in Thailand. And it's much more economical and it's, it's a barrel of laughs to ride, even for yeah. a big guy like me. So, And you've got an opportunity with your next Thai tour to run at the, the Chang Circuit that they're going to be running next weekend for we're, World Superbike. Yeah, we're trying to organize bikes for the Chang Circuit and trying to get dates. The, the, the biggest issue with our tours for the track and tour uh, type of package is getting dates for the track. That's always the largest challenge for planning a tour ahead of time. Um, Australia is right on the ball. We've already got our dates for, for this year, for December. It's, it's already set. Spain, it always takes some ages to get their, their dates ready and set. Thailand well, is a little fuzzy, it's, it's, you know. Sp Spain can be a little. <laughs> yeah, it's, yes, it's a, a different cultural attitude. Yeah. So that makes planning a tour, particularly early in the year, uh, uh, rather difficult in some destinations. I've planted a few seeds in your head. <laughs> Have I not? Yes. Portimao. Mm -hmm. uh, Donington. Yeah. And uh, you could plenty, plenty, plenty of roads uh, over there. Um, and Aragon, you, you Ar Aragon. Poss possibilities at Aragon as well. Argentina, Kuala Lumpur. <laughs> Kuala Lumpur, combining it with the uh, the uh, the Campbell Highlands, yeah. uh, would be a great tour. Uh, but the, these are all possibilities that keep coming up. The the, the great possibilities, Coda, Coda. yeah, Coda, <laughs> with. with, with Texas Tornado Boot Camp. Yeah, that was, there's so many ideas for great tours. So every year we try to launch at least one new tour. And last year it was Phillip Island and that worked off worked out fabulous. The Australians did a great job. Our contacts with uh, California Superbike School, Keith Code and Steve Brogy down, uh, down under really set things up for us. And I feel more confident now about that tour than any other tour we're running in terms of everything working exactly the way I want it. Cool. Well, so you've got, um, in not too long from now, uh, your Italian tour with Mugello yes. sandwiched in the middle. Uh, totally <laughs> awesome track. This is this <laughs> is the this is the new tour for this year, and every tour, every year we try to bring on a new tour, at least one, uh, to to mix it up a little bit. And this year, uh, I'm working together with a local guide, Enrico Grassi, who knows all the back roads and local restaurants. Proper pronunciation. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 
he, I told him exactly what we wanted, lots of curvy roads and lots of good restaurants and more about the experience of authenticity rather than hitting the standard tourist trail. Because Enrico can give us whatever we want. Yeah. Uh, but then combining it together with a visit to Ducati, a specially scheduled tour of the plant. Back to Ricorsa. Yeah, and then wrapping it up, being the guest of Ducati at Mugello with actually Panigale uh, bikes to ride on the track. And it's a fabulous course, and I'm really <laughs> looking forward to it. It's just, it's the food, it's the wine, it's the fabulous roads. It's the Ducati girls. Uh, some definite, some definite <laughs> eye candy, especially in, in uh, northern Italy. <laughs> I, I, I have to admit, my, I do get quite distracted riding in uh, riding in Italy, uh, from the view from uh, from time to time. And your personal bike is a uh, multi strata right? That's my bike for Northern California. Uh, I kind of like the horsepower of the uh, of the Ducati. Uh, it, what, that's a lot what, of fun. What do you choose when you're leading a tour? Uh, again, it all comes back to uh, where I'm at. Choosing the right tool for the job and what's available. Uh, the GS1200 is a is a kind of a neutral bike. Some people may say it lacks personality, but you know what? It makes a great bike on tour. It has enough power. It has enough suspension. You've got little hookups and things that you need. It's a good machine. It's a good bike for rent, and I, I congratulate BMW for the for the new release of that 1200 with a water cool. It's got just that little bit more power. Sure, I like my Ducati a little bit more for the horsepower, but I think the suspension on the BMW is actually just a little bit better. Uh, uh, electri elect electronic suspension on that? Uh, no, it's not even not even the full, well, yeah, just the adjustable, but it's yeah. not the active suspension. But uh, I still. Props to even even though it's not active suspension, it's a damn good setup on that bike, and it makes a really good bike for a lot of the tours that we're on. Yeah, if you keep up expanding your European presence, at a certain point, I think you're going to want your own personal bike over there, stashed somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> fly over, pick up the bike, meet wherever you're going to do uh, it. You I'll know. probably I'll probably pick up a new track bike here before I before I stash a bike in Europe. But. <laughs> All right, so um, Mugello. Mm -hmm. You've got some spots open left for that. Uh, we have three spots left open. Uh, there's a couple of people who've had interest. They're trying to, you know, open up their schedules and whatnot. But we still have three spots left open, and uh, bookings have to get in by March 31st. Not so much for our hotel needs, but Ducati rider experience is very particular, and they want to have everybody's names and rider histories in, sure. so they can plan appropriately and have the right bikes available for people. If you're just a beginning rider, they're going to throw you on a monster out in the parking lot, and maybe you'll get a couple laps of the track. 96. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas most of the guys who are coming on our tour are experienced track riders, and they're going to be put on 899s or 1299s or 1199s, yeah. depending on what, what uh, Ducati brings out. No, Desmo Sedici is hanging around. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think more important than Desmo Sedici is Ducati brings out some of its you know top test riders and yeah. a couple of, you never know who's going to show up at Ducati rider experience, but guaranteed there's one or two guys there that you're going to want to have sign your leathers. There are going to be seven yeah. or eight guys. Last year was massive. Yeah. Um, they were doing drag races on the Brutal. <laughs> I mean, seriously, you got Bayless up against uh, uh, the Vizioso. Yeah, you never know who Ducati is going to bring out, but either either way, you know you're going to have a fabulous, it's going to be a very Italian day. Yes. It's, it, think of it as all the involvement and coaching of a, of a Keith Code Superbike School, very intense day. But with definitely some Ducati style added in, I'm expecting uh, definitely a fair amount of espresso being served in the morning. <laughs> you know, <it's laughs> oh, great. A, bu a bunch of amped up riders on 899s. <laughs> There's a great idea. Yeah, and the, the other thing about that tour is um, we consider it also a great couples tour because let's face it, you're riding across the backdrop of a romance novel. That, 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 That's a very good point. Um, do you have, it's not uncommon for people to come on your tours to it? Not uncommon at all. Yeah. Um, the Phillip Island tour, we had uh, we had a few passengers who came on, and and I actually am quite rather envious of the passengers because while we were riding Phillip Island, they were at the local wildlife park falling in love with wallabies. Oh yeah yeah yep. So uh, the uh, the MotoGP guys make a tour there every year. Yeah, when they're down there. It, the, it, beware if you go on the Australia tour and you bring you, you bring a wife along. They're going to fall in love with a wallaby and they're going to try to figure out how. Or, or a husband along. along while you're riding PI. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, that said, we definitely have had some women riders, some women track riders, and we encourage that. Yeah. Absolutely encourage that. Women riders are very welcome. Well, uh, a, a big part of your team are women. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So couldn't run it without it. Yeah. Always 
good to have women on the team. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, thank you, Kath. No, I want to. I want to hear more later. Okay. Um, All right. Here, have a final oh, sip of Talisker right, then. <laughs> Trust me, I'll be back. <laughs> Cheers from Northern California. <laughs>